So how did you feel about the stock market on Monday? Were you sitting a little too close to the fire and got scorched? Or were you like me, sitting back, relaxed, and enjoying the warmth of the radiation? Keep in mind, when stock markets turn, particularly for the worse, the mood and the perceptions also turn, and they feed off of one another. You can actually feel it. Have you noticed the change in the news? Politically, it's been the same about Donald Trump. Impeachment and Russia, 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 Russia. That's nothing new. But the drumbeat will take its toll. Specifically to business, have you heard about Tesla? The potential bankruptcy rumors and the short sellers. And what about Facebook? Data mining, data targeting, the scandal, the potential regulations. And then there's Amazon. Trump's talked about the cost to the post office and, of course, the taxpayer. And the lack of retail taxes paid by Amazon, which is putting some businesses out of business. It all takes its toll, and it's all part of the process, particularly when markets turn. Let's take a look. During the sell-off on Monday afternoon, trade reached levels not seen since early February, at least by one measure, the arms index. It was at its highest level since briefly hitting 2.6 on February 5th when the market saw another sharp descent. The arms index is a volume-weighted measure of market breadth that tends to rise when the broader market falls, as the intensity of the selling in declining stocks is usually greater than the intensity of buying in rising stocks. Any level above two is considered panic, and the number of advancing stocks on the NYSE outnumbered decliners, 2,378 to 567, or at about 4.2 to 1 margin. So as you can see in the chart, by the time we got to around noon, there was panic selling. And even though the sell-off did abate later in the afternoon. The panic selling remained through the end of the day. Let's go to the next chart. And also significant by Monday morning, the markets triggered both a negative downward move to tumble into the Dow Theory sell signal territory. And as you can see by this chart here, the S&P 500 breached its 200-day moving average. And although these two signals may not guide our moves. We need to keep these in mind since many other investors are guided by these signals. So let's go to the next chart. And as you can see here, the S&P 500 posted its worst start to a second quarter since 1929. And that quarter, second quarter in 1929, preceded the crash of 1929 that happened in October of that year. So where do we go from here? Well, let's go to the price charts. And this is the six month daily chart on the spiders, symbol SPY. And this here is the close as of Monday, 257.47. Now, the close is lower than it was back here in early mid-February, even though in the intraday move, we did go a little bit farther down here at that point. Let's go take a look at the MACD. Looking at the MACD, the fast line is certainly well below it was, say, in early February, but I don't think things are as bad as they may seem. The reason I say that is the histogram, well above the low from early mid-February. Moving here into the momentum indicator, it's about the same. We're just a little bit higher here than we were back in early mid-February. Back down here to the price rate of change. This is taking a pretty good dive down, probably about the same level. We'll have to wait to see what happens on Tuesday and later this week. Moving into the relative strength, we are here at 32.88, so we do see some improvement there. Moving into the stochastics, it's trying to make a curve and move on through here and up above the slow line. Not yet 
I think we'll see that relatively soon. Volume is fine, and the Williams looks like there's some improvement here. So back up to the price chart. The oscillators are telling me that the stock is trying to recover, trying to base, and wants to attempt a move up. And that's where we need to watch real closely. We need to get above this level here, and then this level here. That's where I think the problems may be, between here and these two points up here. We're going to have to watch real closely. I don't see any trouble right now that's significant. I see problems, but I don't think it's very significant yet. We've got to see how the recovery goes, how quickly the rally is, if there is a rally. It needs to get up to these two levels. If it doesn't, then that's when the pain can start. We're going to start watching this a little bit more closely on a weekly basis. But don't be alarmed. I'll stay on top of this for you. So for Chew Dog Charts, thank you.